that's really important, that bit. I think that for, for, for even small companies, big companies, medium companies, don't, don't underestimate how you could generate business outside of the UK because it was quite ridiculous. We were thinking about opening a shop, this is ironic actually, in Southampton, in whatever it's called, the shopping centre. The rent is 250,000 pounds a year. We have this most ridiculous thing called rates. It's the most, uh, you, uh, people think we're mad by the way, this rates thing, 100 grand for a shop, 1,200 square feet in Southampton, 100,000 pound rates for some geezer basically to empty your bins or something. And then we went to Chicago, which everyone's much richer, frankly, and so I'm from Portsmouth, so there's obviously a Portsmouth Southampton thing here, but um, <laughs> everyone's much richer in Chicago than they are in Southampton. I mean, it's a, it's a fact. The rent is, 60,000 pound less to have a shop in Chicago. There's no rates. When you say, what about rates? I say, don't be so ridiculous. Wouldn't have a thing called that. You just pay your rent, that's it. We will make damn sight more money having a shop in Chicago than we will having one in Southampton. I mean, this rates thing is another thing I could talk for an hour about because it's really ridiculous anyway. So I think, think bigger. Um, rewrite and rewrite and rewrite your business plan if you're in control of those things. If you're not, right one anyway and take it to your boss and say, look, I think we should do this because frankly, he probably doesn't know what to do either. You know, sometimes you think your boss is a lot smarter than he actually is, but help him out. And if anything, if you do anything, cut your costs. I mean, we, we're, we're certainly doing that, unfortunately. It's quite a miserable thing to say, but I think... Um, the next couple of years are going to be difficult. Hopefully the country will come out in a stronger way. Um, I think that might be the end of my presentation. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Any questions from the floor uh, to Neil about his terrific story there? Let me ask you, oh, there's one down there. There's a mic coming, actually. Could, could I ask your view on the um, future of the high street in, in the UK? I think, I, think it's, I think we really are in for a very difficult, uh, difficult run. I think that um, costs are, as I mentioned, I, I have a bit of a bugbear for this rates thing, but I think costs are constantly on the rise. Are there any landlords in the room? Um, they're also a complete pain in the ass uh, because this is this upward only. Of course, the world is always a better, brighter place. I think costs are going up, therefore, we're not really opening more stores. In fact, I think we will probably, of the 57, we think we'll probably close five or ten in the next five years. I think the internet is changing the game. You know, people are busy. I think the internet is a fabulous way to shop, actually, and everyone's throwing money at their websites to be fabulous places, frankly, a lot better than most stores in many respects. So I think we're probably at the beginning of quite a lot of change on the high street. Um, bit of a fluffy answer, because I don't have the solution, but I think there will be winners and losers and the big places where there's more variety, the shopping centers, the Blue Waters, the Westfields of the world will probably be the successes. I mean, it's quite depressing going to um, Commercial Road or Palmerston Road in Portsmouth. You know, it's, it's, um, it's quite a difficult place to be, frankly, and I think it will probably get more difficult. Okay, we've got time for another on the front row there. Yeah, you've had a lot of positive experiences in your business career. Is there one standout moment, something either materially that you've achieved or something in your business career that really made it all worthwhile? Well, there's, there's maybe two or three. The company car thing, honestly, that was, the, that was one of the most exciting things, getting the, and again, getting a list of what I could order, that was the most exciting thing. It wasn't just, oh, you got a shitty Volkswagen Passat or something. I could choose. So that you just offended everybody in the room with a Passat. I'm sorry. Actually, they, it was it was 1995. They're much better now. 
It was a company car thing, which is a bit of a joke, but true, actually. I can remember that moment like it was yesterday. I always wanted to be, and it's, it's quite cheesy, but I always wanted to be a director. I wanted to be called a director before I was 30. And that was a big thing for me, and I managed to achieve that. And I suppose um, the Barclays private equity thing, because we basically sort of cobbled together a business plan, randomly emailed private equity companies. I mean, we weren't so... Actually, BDO um, corporate finance, a guy called Andrew Ware, who runs corporate finance, helped us with it in the end, because we were sort of randomly going around talking to people. But we, we were lucky because Barclays had just sold Hobbs, made a shitload of money, excuse my French, trebled their return on Hobbs in about two and a half years. And we managed to walk in about six weeks later and they, they sort of thought, hey, maybe this could be another Hobbs. And frankly, it sort of was for them in the end. So I think luck, um, you do need luck. And there are unlucky people. You know, again, I've got a few mates in Portsmouth that if a satellite was going to come from the Earth, it probably would hit them, you know, walking down Commercial Road or something. You have to, you have, to have a bit of a lucky personality, which I think I'm one of the fortunate people that have that. And really, frankly, a work ethic. I think, to be honest, we are slightly lazy in this country, which is not a sort of, it's one of those things you can't sort of mention. But we, we, I don't know whether we're, we're just sort of happy people, maybe. We're sort of comfortable in what we do. I mean, maybe that's it. But, you know, if you travel the world and see, see China and see what's going, you think, Christ, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's big battleships coming over the, over the horizon that I don't think we're quite aware of as a nation. So I think we're all going to have to work a bit harder. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that uh, wraps it up. Uh, we're now going to go on to our next speaker, but a, a big, big hand for Neil. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. <laughs>